Today we're going to be looking at 10 running backs that you can pick up off waivers for week 7 to help your fantasy team either set lineups or build depth for the future. But what you need to do right now is click that subscribe button, tap it with your finger on your phone, click it with your mouse on your computer, whatever you got to do to get the job done. We're going deep on the waiver wire every single day. We're going over players one by one. We're doing big videos covering multiple players. We're also helping you set those lineups. We're helping you get those trade dones and everything else. Click that button. Stop missing out. But let's look at these 10 players. And first player we're going to look at for week seven is Chuba Hubbard. And he looked good last week. Was very productive. Scored 16 fantasy points, 88 yards, and a touchdown with Miles Sanders out. And when Miles Sanders is out, Hubbard is a guy you need to look at very hard. And if you're hurting at running back, he's a guy that can help you out in a good way. And when Sanders comes back, Hubbard should earn a little bit more workload. Hubbard's been looking good. He's been looking solid. He's been looking good all year, really. He's just needing more opportunity to score fantasy points. It's been very up and down with a 74.1% opportunity share last week with Sanders out. He's proved that he can be a huge piece in his offense, had 20 touches, and he can be productive and fancy, especially in a plus matchup like this where the Panthers are trying to roll in points right now. With the waiver wire being very light this week, Hubbard is one of the top gets to get. Now we're looking at Roshan Johnson. He was out last week due to a concussion, but we expect him to be back soon. But during weeks one through five, he had a 30.6% snap share and a 31.4% opportunity share. Saw a good bit of work for being a rookie, sharing the backfield with Khalil Herbert, but he's out. Khalil Herbert's out. We should see a boost in all these workload metrics. Should be seeing more routes per game. Should be seeing more targets per game. Should be seeing more opportunities per game, more touches. We saw the running backs last week. They did not get it done. Roshan Johnson has more pop in the step. The team just invested in him. He's been playing over all these guys all season long. He should be the RB1 going forward. Once he's back on the field, he's going to be seeing a heavy workload. He was the first running back drafted on day three, six foot, 225. Thing about him, you don't trust the Bears, but the thing about you right now, you're looking at waivers, and none of the guys on waivers right now are trustable anyways. If not, they'd be on a roster, so you're going to have to pick a running back who's getting some workload. Rashawn Johnson's getting touches. He does have some upside here. He's using the pass. The game has size, good wiggle, good burst, something you want to look at. Now we're looking at Jordan Mason because Christian McCaffrey has an oblique strain. We need to pay attention to that. All things considered, this could be nothing, and Christian McCaffrey could be back very soon. So you may not want to blow too much fab on Jordan Mason, but saw 15 snaps last week and a 20% opportunity share with McCaffrey out and mixed in a little bit. 8.7 PPR fantasy points. He's got some size. Good athleticism for his size as well when you got things adjusted. Looks like he's going to be getting opportunities if McCaffrey's out. Looks like it's going to be a little bit of a committee because we also have Elijah Mitchell back. Last week was his first game back from a knee injury. Wasn't getting full opportunity as he probably shouldn't as he missed the last two games, but could ramp up a little bit. He had a good rookie season a couple years ago. Has good bursts. Home run speed, home run hitter. We could be seeing a thunder-lightning scenario with him and Jordan Mason if McCaffrey's out. Pick your poison with this backfield. Now we're looking at the Detroit Lions. David Montgomery's got a rib issue. Will this affect him long term? We got to pay attention to the news. Craig Reynolds could be a guy that could step up. He saw 43 snaps last week. He's dependable. He's one of those dependable RB3s, RB4s on the back end of a depth chart that you barely hear of, but gets an opportunity here and there every season to show what he's worth. And he's a guy that they can use between the tackles on the goal line, hold it down for some series here. And he saw a 50% opportunity share once David Montgomery was out. The team depends on Reynolds. They like him. He's been there for a good bit. And Jameer Gibbs is dealing with a hamstring. Is he going to be back this week? Is he going to be back soon? If not, it's the Craig Reynolds show. If Gibbs is back, we might see a little bit of a committee here where Reynolds takes the goal line work in between the tackles. Gibbs using the passing game. Could be a situation where Reynolds gets the touchdowns on the goal line. Gibbs gets the passing work. Maybe a little bit more. Could be 50-50. Could be 60-40. But if you're hurting for a running back... Maybe you want to look at Reynolds. 
Now we got an interesting situation. Kyron Williams out. Ronnie Rivers out. They're both hurts. And we talked about this before. What are the Rams going to look like when these running backs start to turn over? Kyron Williams was getting a lot of touches this year. He was hitting 100% opportunity share in a lot of games, which is hard to do for a running back. You need to share some of that workload. And this is something that kind of happens sometimes with some of these depth charts where the running back depth chart just rolls over with injuries. We're seeing it right now with the Rams. That's why we cover the running back depth charts for every team just about and go over these lesser known players because this is an instance that happens a couple times a year with some random teams. We got one here and Zach Evans, we've already talked about him. And I went over the story. He was a five-star recruit regarded as one of the top talents in high school coming out, and every college wanted him, and then he gaslit every collegiate program, lengthened that out for eternity, it felt like, and then signed with TCU, and then when he played there, he showed promise. He showed some highlights. He showed some flash, but really did not live up to the expectations. Then he got hurt a little bit, pretended he was going to transfer to Deion Sanders, did not do that. Went to Ole Miss. Then he was the one be the Judkins there for his final season. Then he comes out for the draft, falls out of the draft, did not do that well at the combine. But all things considered, when you look at Zach Evans, this is a running back that has tremendous talent, has burst, has decent vision at times, does all the things good. It's just not consistent. He's a guy that you just want to shake and say, get it together. Because really, he could have been one of the top running backs in this year's draft class. Really could have been like a second round pick, but fell. He's one of those players that you see it on tape. You watch him play. He does some good things, but it's not consistent from play to play. But you see where the upside is, and it never hits. It hasn't yet. In high school, it was just a weird story. And it's just been continuously like that going forward. Looking at him as a player, we see the upside. If he gets touches and he just starts turning over, he could be a massive play. The downside is very, very low, like bottomless low. It's boom bust like any other waiver wire player. But the highs are immense due to the talent. But he does not live up to his potential. We have a history of that. So a lot of people are going to talk him up a little bit as he's going into the situation. Because he, you kind of can because he has the talent here. But also, we have all this baggage and this history with Zach Evans. From him falling in the draft to him catfishing all these colleges before him making his final decision. For his weird transfer to Ole Miss, it's just been rolling over and over and over again. And then you watch the highlights. You watch the tape. You watch the college tape. You watch the preseason tape. And you see a player here that you know that if they just develop, take a step forward, do things right, you got a player here. You got a guy with immense upside. I see this all the time with prospects, people in real life. A lot of times that doesn't hit. But again, for a cheap gamble, you may want to look at this because if he hits, he's going to hit big. Now we're looking at Latavius Murray. Damian Harris got hurt. Does not look good for him. I feel bad for him. Latavius Murray earlier in the season was seeing a lot of opportunities, seeing targets, seeing a lot of work, and that's a good thing for him. Work along the goal line, scored a couple touchdowns earlier this year. You're looking at him as a backup running back, a 1B or whatever you want to call him, as a guy getting opportunities around the goal line, catching a few balls. If the plays break his way, you got a fantasy performance. Usually it don't, but there's a few games here and there where he can get you like 11, 10, 12 fantasy points. Now we're looking at Tajay Spears. We talk about him in almost every one of these videos. But he's out snapping Derrick Henry. He's just not getting the opportunities and touches, but he's used in the passing game a good bit. In some instances, they're going to have to check it down to him a little bit more. He got that one big reception for 48 yards. That was later in the game. However, he did lead the team in receiving. That's just how bad this team is in the passing game right now. Tajay Spears has some upside, but he's a guy that you can't count on. He's a guy that you throw up in the lineup, close your eyes, see what happens. But if something happens to Derrick Henry, you know he's getting workload. You know he's getting used. And one reason we know why, because he has that degenerative knee issue that is a concern for his long-term play. So why not get that workload out of him now? 
because you know you don't have a long-term player more than likely. So he is a guy you need to look at. Now we're looking at Jaleel McLaughlin. Javante Williams is back, but it looks like they're splitting the workload, and they're splitting the workload early in the games. He saw a 40.4% snap share. That's a good thing. Saw a 42.9% opportunity share. P. Ryan's done. Samaji P. Ryan's cooked. He only saw nine snaps. Looks like Jaleel McLaughlin stole some opportunity. I don't know if you want an RB2 or an RB1B on the Broncos. They do have a juicy schedule coming up, but the Broncos got to live up to their end. So some of these fantasy points could be buoyed due to some of these matchups. But still, if you're hurting, you need touches. He does show some promise, some burst, some wiggle. You may want to be interested. Just depends on how bad you're hurting. Now we're looking at Keontae Ingram. I don't know if you want any of these Cardinals running backs. We talked about this extensively last week. And a lot of people were arguing over Ingram or Demarcado. And it was a mute point because this backfield's not fun. It's not fun to have. Keontae Ingram... Had a lot of snaps by halftime. Then the Cardinals were behind in the second half. They used Demarcado even more in the passing game. 44.4% opportunity share for Ingram. Still getting workload. You can use either one of these running backs. Looks like Ingram's going to be the guy, especially when he led the backfield in touches. Looks like he's getting the workload. If you need touches, what that means, they're getting touches and you're hoping for the best. Hoping they score a touchdown or something or a long game. But... If you don't, you may want to let him be. But if you're hurting, it's another running back to look. Those are 10 running backs that you can pluck off the waiver wire right now to help your fantasy football team, either to give you depth or something to throw into that lineup to get you through week seven. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to hear about it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. Catch you on the next video.